This is Oscar Extra, the visual version of our pop-up radio channel. We've brought in our experts into the studio to canvas their views on various aspects of the Oscar Pistorius trial. I have advocate Manny Witts, I have attorneys Tyron Masako and Cliffy Alexander. Now we're going to have a look at the performance of Oscar Pistorius himself uh, on the stand. And let me start with you on this one, Manny. Um, obviously it gets divided up into the uh, evidence in chief and then the cross-examination. Did he put up under uh, evidence in chief uh, a, a credible version of what happened that night? In evidence in chief, he put up a version, and one must remember he was married to a version. His version is what he told Dr. Stipp, what he said in the bail application, and what he said in his section 115 plea explanation. Putative private defense, I made an honest but erroneous mistake. So he was married to that version. I thought it was an intruder. That yes. is why I fired the shots. So he was stuck with that version. So in evidence in chief, on the main count, that is the murder charge, or the premeditated murder charge, together with the competent verdicts, he put up a version dealing with that. And it was only when he started with the cross-examination, when Cleary started the cross-examination, that unfortunately it all started tumbling. It, it, it started unraveling in your view then, Manny? It definitely unraveled. And um, I don't know if I would really, at the, at the end of the day, everybody's got their own different style. Kerry took a very aggressive and a very emotional stance right at the beginning with the zombie stoppers and showing a picture of the late Reva with blood coming from her head and the wound, etc. Really upset him. I think it upset a lot of people. Obviously, when one looks at the mother of the deceased, she'd been prepared for it by Kerry now because you could see she was impassive made no particular um, a moment on her. But if you look at everyone else, everyone was taken aback and shocked by his initial trying to get an admission or confession, so to speak, out of Harry Nell in cross-examination. But the more that he started cross-examining Harry Nell, uh, that Harry Nell started cross-examining Oscar, slowly and surely the version, the credibility of the version, whether his version could be accepted as reasonably possibly true, because that's all he has to show the court. It doesn't even have to be the truth. The test is simple. Is his version reasonably possibly true as opposed to the burden of proof that rests on the state to prove the case beyond any reasonable doubt against him? Yes. And um, he wasn't a good witness. He was a poor witness. He was very evasive. Um, the breaking down in the emotion, that's obviously understandable. One can understand he's upset. One can understand he was under medical treatment. It was raised in the heads of argument and all that. But it doesn't go away from the thrust of his actual evidence in the cross-examination. If one looks at the key points... I don't think he acquitted himself very well. I think he was not a very, very good witness. Let's just pick up on the uh, the, the change to his defence, the putative private defence, and suddenly we had this um, the involuntariness, the automatism uh, that that came about. Was that? Do you feel Tyron um, Oscar Pistorius uh, being over, he was uh, under pressure through the cross examination and blurted out these versions, not realising that he was actually changing his defence. Correct. I mean, it actually surprised me, uh, David. It really, really surprised me because that moment was actually what this entire trial, on the main charge, on this murder charge, that very moment was the most important uh, of all the evidence was gonna, that was going to be led. So you'd have thought that Oscar Pistorius would have actually been prepped, that they would have gone through that incident and when I say they now, his legal representative, That's he right. would have explained exactly what happened to a point where it could not have come to a surprise to anyone that that's his defense. Because remember that when his legal representatives, his legal representatives put together a legal defense, not factual stuff, you tell them what, what happened. They then decide in law, this is your defense. And that was, as uh, many have said, putative self-defense. Cliffy, your thoughts on uh, the performance of Oscar Pistorius on the stand? As Harry Nell has rightly pointed out, he's the second worst uh, witness he's ever seen. The worst is <coughs> reserved for Jackie another Zanibi. one of his, of his victims, per se. Um, in the heads of argument in pertaining to the bail, you recall they went to the High Court. The High Court was approached. Um, Barry Rue's heads of arguments categorically stated, our defence is self-defence, albeit putatively. Mm. It's spelt out. Nothing to do with automatism. Defences, as, as, as uh, my learned colleagues here will tell you, and as you're aware, you studied law, David, have to be spelt out. Yes. This came out, as Tyron has rightly said, during the cross-examination, then suddenly we had to consult new witnesses and the automatism was introduced. Barry also very, very cleverly, and rightly so, then argues that we've laid a basis for it, the automatism per se. However, Harry Nell says they are mutually destructive, and I agree with him. Yep. That's not a civil case, it's a criminal case. Yep. You can't say, I shot intentionally, but I acted 
automatism, negligent. It so doesn't, doesn't exist. Not, not yet. Can I sum this up by saying that Oscar Pistorius <laughs> has created more problems for his defence than, uh, than clarification for Oscar us. Pistorius didn't spill the milk, he threw it out of the window. And his defence team had to go down and try and find a cow to milk with the greatest of respect. Well, thanks to our experts, more analysis coming up on the Oscar Pistorius trial.